Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another Facebook Live. Welcome to the Art Corner. You are in the Art Zone with Miriana Persakis aka Mim. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you all here. I just thought I'd fix my headgear really, really quickly. So I wanted to say good afternoon Australia, good morning India. Thank you all for connecting with me. Of course, good evening to New York and all the creative minds in America. Really, really happy to have you along. If you're watching, I hope you are and haven't gone to bed. Nonetheless, hope you're tuning in. Now, um, importantly, I just want to say, Jagdish, if you're watching, create something today. Create it, because I know you can. Whatever you can, create it. You'd have an incredible time. Now, of course, today I'm painting my favorite, favorite street style item, which of course is the Converse sneaker. I have started it briefly behind me because the initial process is to use um, watercolor to block in with watercolor and I need that to dry before I can then jump onto the oil paint. So that's why I have partially began that process behind me. So um, sit back, relax. Of course, Facebook, please get the license for music. It'd be really, really good to actually do this with music. Nonetheless, I've got my trusted earplugs with me. So I'm going to tune them in and have a little bit of tunes behind me. So you'll see me groove to a couple of tunes. It just gets that energy going, which is really, really good for me. And just briefly as well, I want to quickly state that remember, art is incredibly, incredibly strong developer for a uh, strong mindset, for a sturdy, focused, um, incredibly um, galactic force of a mindset. And so when you're creating anything, what you're doing is, is that you are focusing on, on that particular job at hand or, or whatever, whatever your creative outlet is. And so you don't actually then have the mind wandering everywhere else and thinking about anything else other than what you're focused on. So thus again, if you have a time, during your day, your week, on a weekend, get something going and you'll find that you begin to relax, your body begins to relax, your mind is a lot more relaxed and there's just that nicer flow about you. So um, remember that. Now, send in your questions if you've got any questions. Always, always happy to answer. But in the meantime, we're going to begin painting sneakers and Converse is what's on the menu today. And um, ask your questions as you go along. I'll do my best to answer them, of course, but I'm going to be concentrating on the picture oil painting behind me. In the meantime, I'm going to put the microphone down. You might still be able to heal me, which I know you can. There's just no music, but you've got my earplugs in, cranking some of your own iTunes that you've got going on in the background, and um, we'll start painting. actually to transfer to the oil so you see me do a quick block in and this is the actual um, a, a roadmap if you'd like just so that I can get a better understanding on now where to really apply the oil paint and, it's, and as you've seen me do before with portraits this is really just almost like getting out the negative ideology of what something should be and just really being free and flowy and getting through those um, barriers before I begin the final oil paint. So I'm just going to quickly wait for that to dry, which is pretty hot in here at the moment, as you can tell. So um, the oil should be um, right to go on straight away, but I'm going to move my um, acrylic paint to the side. There we go. And um, just bring in the oil paints a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually start to paint it from top down and, and then work the shoe um, as we go. Basically, remember, wet into wet. So I might jump from certain areas, and that's purely because I've got the same color on my palette knife, which is what I normally paint with. You remember seeing that before. But um, generally, I'll start from the top down and then work the paint around until you start the shoe, uh, until you start to see the shoe almost become three-dimensional. So um. Bear with me as we do that. Hope you guys are going well. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're cool. 
or warm, wherever you are in the world. I'm not quite sure. But in the meantime, again, in go my beautiful music and I'll catch you guys soon. actually building and building and layer upon layer upon layer upon layer um, each different section of the actual still life and I, I actually start to forget that, that I'm painting a shoe or that it's um, you know an everyday item and what my real focus starts to begin is to look at the different facets of that particular item how it's curved how it stands moves and behaves as well as Think about the tones, the shadows, the warmth of the actual color that I'm placing. Is it a warm? Is it a cool? Um, and then go from that point forward. So when, you know, whatever still life you're doing, or even if it's a portrait, it doesn't really matter. The ideology behind what I'm doing is got to do with shapes, tonality, and then the warm and cold of a color. And then that's how I basically walk back and work back and front to, act, to build that particular item. So I'm hoping that you guys can see that. I'm going to just bring it up close. I can't take it off and um, actually see the detail. Maybe, there we go. So, there we go. So I'm going to continue for a little while longer just to build up the tones. Um, I realize that we're now half an hour into this. I mean, for me personally, I can spend an incredible amount of time refining the tones and I can do an eight hour stint on this particular painting. But just for your information, I really condensed everything here today for, for about a 40 minute demo. So you guys have got an idea of where to start and then where to go from there. I mean, this discussion is endless, of course. I can go into so much more information around the colors, what I'm using, how I mix them, um, what process I'm going through before I apply a, a particular tone. But um, just for the, you know, the, the live process, I really am condensing everything to just this, um, you know, for you guys to see how it goes from beginning to start, from start to end, I should say. I'm losing my brain. Lunchtime and I think my brain's hungry. But anyway, we'll continue on. So I'm gonna continue painting, build up the tones as I go. Maybe bring that a little bit closer. That's good. Um, let me put that down there we go and um, yeah we'll start working more on the painting and of course then I'll round it off at the end with um, some tips and um, you know ideas that you guys can take and work in those <laughs> to um, let it sit for a little while of course come back to it after after the lunch break but that was a really quick um, example of again focusing on your favorite item using the palette knife doing a quick block in with the acrylics then jumping into the oil paint and then building up the layers as you go along so the same ideology actually exists for you know an inanimate object like a sneaker just like it is for a portrait or a landscape it's really all about the same three principles mixing the tones looking at the temperature and then of course you know for me personally then I, I assess the shapes and the direction of that particular subject before I begin to you know build 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 and just remember you know with better bring that microphone closer with um, with oil paint you really do have to begin painting from the dark to the light 
um, watercolors are obviously a little bit different and so this will allow you to then build up your layers and then get that spark or that light right at the end the important thing to first begin with with oil paint and this is something that I have seen over and over again with students being really really cautious and that is to apply your darks dark don't be afraid of the dark there's a little you know philosophical thing for you there because if you don't go to the darkest point then your light is just not going to stand out and be as fun and vibrant and zingy so that's a really really important fact um, the other thing too with still life is of course have and just think about the composition when you're setting it up really important um, having a, a creative um, composition where the eye flows around the canvas um, that's going to also give your artwork a bit more of a leg up a bit more interest a bit more fun because you almost want that composition to speak to your audience to speak to the viewer so just yeah you know when you're setting up consider that if you are stuck with um, not knowing where to go and what how to set up composition of course do look it up online there's a lot of various examples my simple process with composition is I use the phi ratio PHI ratio um, also called the golden mean and it's really prevalent in a lot of the um, 16th 17th century art even earlier and so when you start to understand and study that form of composition setup it then just becomes a lot easier to set up your composition really really interesting or from a point that adds a lot more interest than ad hoc way of saying is this going to work or is that going to work so do a little bit more research into that but I'm going to leave you guys with that for the moment I'm going to let it um, sit for a little while I will come back to it of course to finish it and once I do I'll post the final picture on Facebook for you as always please feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like um, I, again I don't know everybody's different um, journey whether you're at the beginning middle or at the end of your art process but nonetheless I will do my absolute best to answer any of the questions and any other you know uh, anomaly that you've got about art please feel free to type it in and I'm happy to respond whether it's live or, or directly to you either or I'll um, definitely find the time to do that in the meantime I always thank you wholeheartedly for tuning in I super duper appreciate your support and um, I hope you enjoyed that that was really fun I enjoy painting them I love them I think they're incredible they're sitting up on there as we speak as you see the painting um, they were my uh, literal still life setup but um yeah create 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 paint do sculpt cross stitch whatever you guys um, are passionate about you don't have to paint like me I actually don't advocate that you paint like me but certainly I hope to be a spark plug where you go and create something that is you and that is interesting to you that invokes passion within you because art really does develop an incredibly strong mindset it allows you to focus it allows you to create more patience it allows you to have courage and strength and resilience um, I've heard a saying the other day that said um, I'd rather create and be criticized than be the one that always criticizes so whether you like it or not I really don't mind and I really don't care at the end of the day it's all about having a free heart and a free mind and if I inspire one person around the globe to be their full authentic self super happy and super proud of um, being that spark plug for you so thank you for tuning I love you go and create remember you are one out of seven billion as I've always said and there is no other person in this entire world like you until next time guys thank you I love you create and I'll see you next time stay tuned by the way I do post everything on Facebook of what's coming up so I'll subscribe and make sure you turn your notices on and you get notified for everything that's happening on um, future things live shows etc etc send in your questions send in your questions until next time guys bye